Welcome back. For those of you following along, this is the second half of the desktop build that we started in the last video. Just a quick recap. You can see a couple of steps I did in the last video, cutting the molds, getting them covered with the sheathing tape so that the epoxy won't stick. Cleaning up the slabs, getting all the bark and the cambium off so that I get a good epoxy bond. And then cutting those slabs down to fit into the mold in just the right orientation. And you've got to think through that ahead of time so that you make sure you get things optimal, get the right features in the right places for the best look. Once everything's cut to size, get it up into the mold and, uh, and then pour the epoxy. And for those that were following, that was the end of the last build. I finished pouring the epoxy uh, in that build and had everything curing. And then right at the end, just demolded the desktop. And so that's what we'll pick up here. Uh, if you thought we had enough flattening in the first round, nope, got to start that all over again now that we've got everything poured. So get the desktop on the new flattening table and check out my other videos for a build on that. Get everything glued down so the table uh, and the desk are together and also parallel so that I get a good flat parallel surface and then start flattening. Uh, if you recall, I left the middle slab a little bit tall as compared to the outboard slabs. And uh, that meant that the beginning of flattening, I had to spend a bit of time going through and hogging out that material off that top slab. Um, I think I did two or three passes to just knock that surface down. And the third pass, I was just starting to get into the material on either side. With the flattening table being so wide, had to use a clamp to hold the router as I was working. May or may not have been the best idea I've ever had. It worked out really well. Things went pretty smooth, didn't really have any issues with it. I don't know if it was the safest idea I've ever had, but uh, it worked nonetheless. I wanted to show here, I brought this up in the last video, just how messy it is. That's a shot of my slab flattening jig and the shop after one pass. And you can just see there are shavings everywhere. So if you figure, flattening this on both sides probably eight to ten total passes i like to do them a little shallow for the most part especially when i'm into the real bulk of the material so i don't get too much damage or any tear out uh, that's a lot of shavings and a lot of mess and it takes ages to clean up you can see here i'm onto the second side not that that's obvious to anybody but uh one side flatten flip it over and start on the next side one thing that uh, I found I wasn't too happy with was the gap. To be able to have enough gap to flatten a two inch or more slab, um, that also means when you've got a thinner piece like this desktop that you've got to have a really, uh, really big depth between the router itself and the material so your bit isn't held super well, which is not a good idea, do not recommend. Or you've got to lift the slab up. That's what I did here. And after that, kind of went back and spent some time, did a little bit of YouTubing, to be honest, check out what other folks are doing. And a uh, couple of, of folks that I've been checking out on YouTube have been using bit extenders. Um, really liking that idea. Picked one up, only about 10 or 15 bucks. Haven't tried it out yet. Probably try that out in one of the next videos coming up here, but uh, something new to hopefully make things a little bit safer, a little smoother and uh, make the whole thing work a little bit better. I didn't capture the video of it, but I uh, had to go back through and do a little bit of touch up with epoxy fills here to fill a couple of gaps that opened up, especially in the bottom side where I wasn't able to get that in um, with the first pour just because it was all sealed down nicely. So filled the, the gaps, uh, chipped away with the, with the tool there, just the, the sort of top level with a little bit of heat applied with the heat gun. And then it's on to sanding. I think this is probably Everybody's least favorite part. In some ways, I enjoy it. It's kind of that like peaceful, nothing else but you in the wood, and you get to watch it come to lifetime. Um, but obviously, it's it's pretty monotonous because of all the machining marks uh, from flattening. There's quite a bit of roughness and quite a bit that had to be done. So I actually ended up doing the entire surface twice with 60 grit on both sides. Um, so I did it once, rotated the desktop around and you'll see that coming up in a minute here but rotated it around completely resanded again with 60 grit and then flipped it and repeat on the other side um, 
So quite a bit of sanding to get this one cleaned up. It's a lot of work, but without a big wide belt and having flattened in the orientation that I did, this is kind of what's necessary to clean things up. Some people will use the belt sander. I found that creates almost as much of a, of a new problem with the sanding marks that I get using a high grit. And so I don't really love doing that. I'd rather just take a little extra time with the orbital. So you can see here, like I was saying, rotate things around and then went back and sanded it all again. When I flipped it over, thought I'd get a little smarter, use the block plane to take down some of the high spots. It worked all right, but I did get a bit of tear out, which I wasn't super happy with. And luckily it was on the bottom side that the tear out occurred, but um, probably not something I would do again. Didn't love that outcome. Once I've got the majority of those uh, machining marks out, switched up to 80 grit. And the 80 grit will still do quite a good job of taking out any of that bigger, um, you know, bigger marking, bigger scratches, etc. So uh, with the 80 grit really did take my time again. And that really got everything out. Um, out of the you know top and bottom for the ends and the sides I like to use just a hand sanding block i find maybe it's just my skill set but i get a little bit of rounding on the edges if i do it with the orbital and so at the lower grits I like to do that with you know a hand block really get that nice and smooth the block which i can hold a little bit straighter you saw there i was covering the slab in between uh, working on it, which I work on it on weekends. So there's a lot of times that it's just sitting there hanging out. I like to cover it with a, you know, blanket and a plastic sheet. Covering the slab keeps it from getting different moisture levels on either side so it doesn't warp. I'm using a carryover base for the desk. And so I had to drill out a new hole to make sure that all of the threaded inserts and fasteners go into the wood and not into the epoxy. So I'll drill it out and then marked all the hole locations on the underside of the table so I can come back with the drill and the bubble drill press here and drill up for the threaded inserts. I'm using the carryover base from the desk that I had before just because I have a number of pieces I'm going to build around and with this desk and I kind of want to have all that work done first before I finalize the decision on the new frame I want to build so I'll do all that and then come back. One thing I find really satisfying is sucking up all the dust from some of that drill work. So I wanted to show that here and then coming back and countersinking. And then I had to go back and suck it all up again from all the little countersink shavings. Prior to this, and I didn't show all the grits as I was walking up, but I'd already sanded all of the surface up to 220 grit. So coming back here and doing a little water pop. Some people spray right on. I don't love the beating up of the water, so I like to spray it onto a paper towel or, um, or a cloth and then wipe it on. That also helps to wipe away some of the excess dust and material uh, didn't have my air compressor in the shop here so didn't have that as an option after sanding with the 220 grit again come back with the 320 and this is where really the whole thing comes to life getting that really fine finish so i'll take it all the way up and again more hours of sanding i think probably over the entire project for this desk build i maybe had eight, 10 hours of sanding, maybe a little bit more than that with sanding away the machining marks from um, probably six or seven hours just at 60 grit and then another you know, five to six hours with all the other grits, doubling up on 220 again with the water pop just so that I can take away any of those nubs that are gonna raise up as I apply the finish to the desk. One thing that I want to spend more time on in the future is figuring out how to get a better finish on the epoxy. At 320, it's good, but it's not as clear as I'd like it to be. And with thinner gaps like this that are being filled with epoxy, it's hard to sand those up to a higher grit without getting sanding marks from a hand sander. I prefer to use the orbital on those sections to keep it clean, uh, but then I find that I'm getting into the wood and most manufacturers will recommend not going above 320 if you're going to be applying finish over uh, over the wood and so trying to figure out a balance on that maybe i need to come back and, and use a different finish maybe the answer is to go to something other than an osmo uh, other than a hard wax oil but we'll see something to try in the future 
with all the sanding done all the way up to 320 grit it's time to finish and this you know this is where it really comes to life this is where you get to see exactly what it's going to look like after you get that color popping you get all that grain popping you get rid of all of the sort of whiteness that you see from sanding and this is really where it comes to life so come in here i'll do two coats of the osmo ultra thin um, on both sides of course that's what i'm applying here we'll only show you a little bit and then once i've got the two coats of the ultra thin i'll come back with the regular osmo pollux and apply that two coats again so i've already applied one coat here coming back in and doing the second coat and on the second coat uh, i'll use my orbital with a buffing pad to really buff that in uh, so the first coat i just apply by hand wipe it off wait a, you know at least 24 hours often a week and then come back and run the second coat and i'll rub it in so that i don't just get uh, the finish spraying all over my shop. I find if you don't get it sort of spread out first, it sprays everywhere. Um, rub it in, grab the palm sander, apply the white pad to the bottom, and then buff it in. And that really just helps to, to get a really good uh, finish, get a really even finish, get that finish worked into the wood nicely. Uh, and I think it does help to bring the sheen up a little bit too. It does take a little bit of extra effort and I find wiping away the excess after using the white pad, maybe because of the extra time, is a little bit more difficult. I find it can be uh, a little bit stickier if that's the right word to use. And you'll see as I'm wiping it away, you kind of get, um, you get that extra bit of pull from the blue towel as you're wiping away. And I think just because it is starting to set up a little bit, you get that wax setting up and so. Um, that makes things a little bit more difficult for sure, but I think overall it's worth using the uh, using the orbital and maybe I'll move at some point on to uh, an automotive type buffer. I do have a wax buffer for my truck and uh, maybe that's the right answer. So once it's been applied and obviously got to wait about 15 minutes or so after applying, come back and, and wipe away all the excess. Got to make sure you get as much of that off as possible. Um, I have noticed that in some places where I maybe didn't do as good a job as I should have on previous projects, can get that finish kind of coming back out of the wood a little bit and crystallizing, kind of leaves a bit of a, a roughness. It comes away pretty easily, so it's not necessarily a problem, but if this were a piece for a client, not that I sell pieces to clients, but if I did, uh, you wouldn't want to have that because you can't fix it for them. Once all the finishing is done, come back in, use a little bit of glue just to really help uh, open those grains out and uh, swell them up a little bit as it's setting and put in the threaded inserts i use one quarter 20s pretty easy to find fasteners to go with those of any type and so uh, for me that's just the easiest way to go as i'm putting them in i like to sort of as you would if you were um, cutting threads you know make a half turn come back a little bit make a half turn come back a little bit and just helps to make sure you don't damage any of that thread as you're cutting it in. I had done all the work and was assembling and found that one of my holes was just off center. Came back with the router and the carbide bit here to try to uh, open that up and carbide bit snapped it immediately. I think I just had a little too much vibration going on and those carbide bits not uh, not great with vibration. So bit down. It's only a twelve dollar bit, so not a big deal. Uh, but then had to come back through with the circular file and uh, and clean things out that way. Didn't take that long, so it wasn't that big of a deal, just a little extra work. Uh, and then come back through here, a little bit of 220, just clean up that edge so that it's not rough on the inside and I go around the edge um, right on the, the sort of corners after and clean that up too so that there's no roughness uh, on the corners. For this build, uh, because of the way that the frame that I'm using carryover was constructed, had to use a bit of a smaller head fastener. So just picked up a couple of small button head bolts. These worked really well. The button heads were big enough to grab onto the metal frame. Uh, no problems. And then uh, hold on to the tabletop. Working from underneath the table up, uh, a little difficult here. I'm, I guess, not a pro at that. A little bit of practice needed, but eventually got all six of the, the, uh, bolts in a quick shot of the old desk and here's the beauty roll
Thank you guys for watching and coming back. Appreciate that. I got a couple of different projects coming up, so stay tuned. A couple of things different than what I've built so far. Thanks, everybody. Take care.